Shabbat Shalom. This is the final week before Rosh Hashanah, the end of Elul, and we have a double parashat. Uh, the first one, it's Avim, means standing. As in the first verse of this parasha, you are standing today, all of you, before the Lord your God. As this parashat begins, the entire nation of Israel is present at the ratification of the covenant with God. The covenant is also acknowledged as binding on those who are not with us this day. That is, it's binding on future generations. It's as if we all were there standing together before God in that place on that day. In fact, all of us were there standing before Hashem. He could visualize, he could see all of us together standing before him. Be'alek is Hebrew for then he went out from Devarim 31. This reading was written in the style of a lyric poem or a song. Moshe says to us, take to heart all of the words with which I have warned you this day. Enjoin them upon your children that they may observe faithfully all the terms of this teaching. For this is not, it's not a trifling thing for you. It is your very life. And those are the two parshat for this week. I hope that you have read through all of them. The meaning of these things, when we think about that, we're all standing before Hashem. You see, it's all about being there. Film buffs may remember a movie that was made in 1979 entitled Being There. It starred Peter Sellers in his final film and also Melvin Douglas, both of them Jews. It's based on a novel by a controversial Holocaust survival, survivor Jerry Kozinski. For those of you who have never heard of the film or don't remember it, it was about a mentally challenged middle-aged man who'd been trained as a gardener. In fact, that's the name by which he is identified. He finds himself at the death of his master, put out on the street on his own for the first time in his life with no idea of what to do or where to go. Through a series of accidents and misadventures, he becomes finally and ironically enshrined as the economic and social guru of the President of the United States, a media icon. Perhaps that's not too hard to believe. The theme of the film is that being in the right place at the right time might be the only thing necessary for success or failure in life and may even impact positively or negatively upon how one is perceived by others. Sometimes we talk about this one or that one as a man or a woman of their time or for their time. This is in line with the philosophy of history that suggests that great men or women are made by events or by circumstances. There are two other films that are on a similar theme, Moody Allen's Zelik and the classic 
which I'm sure most of you have have seen, Forrest Gump, starring Tom Hanks. Both of these films are more or less modeled on being there. And both demonstrate that sometimes just showing up is all that really matters. We can see many examples of this phenomena in our own lives. There are people who seem to succeed just by being in the right place at the right time, even though they may have fewer skills or less gifting than someone who doesn't succeed. Some would say this demonstrates that life is unfair. While it certainly is not true that most of us are just taking up space in the world, for everyone is created in the image of God and he loves each of us, there are times when we may wonder if some people have achieved fame and fortune by simply, well, showing up, by being there. Perhaps it would be useful this morning to think about this issue for a few moments, about simply being present, truly present. What, what does that mean? But first, a brief word about our sponsor, about God, Hashem, and his name or title. The Tetragrammaton, often referred to as the personal name for the Holy One, is defined by the Hebrew letters yod heh vav heh which we do not pronounce. Firstly, because it is not given vowel points by the Masorites who translated the scriptures, so we don't know precisely how it should be pronounced. And secondly, our people believe that the personal name or the identification of God should not be said. That's why the Masorites didn't give it vowel points as a sign of our deep respect for Hashem. So Adonai is often used instead when the Tetragrammaton is written in scripture, sometimes in all caps and in Hebrew with the vowel points for Adonai. yad heh vav -Hey is made up of the past, present, and future tense of the Hebrew word to be. It's a statement of who God is, much more than it is a name. In the hymn Adon Olom, we sing, Hu Haya, Hu Hove, Behu Yiye, God is, God was and God will be. This is the essential quality of God. He is. The holiest description of the creator of the universe is existence, that is, his presence. God is, and honestly, what more needs to be said? While that might not be tangible enough for some people. It's a central element of God's identity, his presence. Iye asher, Iye. God tells Moshe at the burning bush, I will be what I will be. I am what I am. This is primary to God's nature. And if that's so, then being there is clearly of importance. On this Shabbat, the final Shabbat of 5784, that means that our Torah portion is composed of these two readings that I've described. 
<clears throat> containing one of the most significant parashot of the entire year, Nitzavim. You stand here today, all of you, the oldest to the youngest, the wealthiest to the poorest, the most famous, famous to the most humble, the readers, the leaders of your community, and the strangers. You are all part of the covenant being confirmed with the Lord your God. You and every generation to come will be descended, who will be descended from you. This great Brit, this covenant, affirms that you and those who follow you will be the people of God. And the one God will be the God of Israel. This covenant affirms that we are part of a profound, eternal tradition with a connection to our ancestors back to Abraham and Sarah that will be carried forward to our descendants door la door generation to generation each of us present this morning in person or online and everyone who will join with us to celebrate the new year, Rosh Hashanah, next week, each of us chooses to be part of the remarkable compact made with God thousands of years ago. It's an extraordinarily democratic and egalitarian agreement with God. A brit, that is, a covenant that is shared with everyone who makes the choice to follow God and his commandments, regardless of gender, background, or age. Children and women stand with men and those from among the nations who choose to be part of Israel with those born of Jewish parents. Yes, it's a very special covenant. But what is the content of the mitzvah that we are now to observe? At the conclusion of our Torah portion, we are told, Ki ha-mitzvah hazot asher anoki mitzavka hayom lo niflet hi mimot. Look, this mitzvah that I command you today is not too awesome for you, and it's not beyond your reach. It's not in the heavens above that you should say, who among us can go up to the heavens and take it for us and teach it to us so that we may do it. It's not across the sea that you should say, who among us can cross over the sea and bring it back to us that we may do it. No, it's very close to you already in your mouth and in your heart to do it. Yes, our God, who knows all things in our hearts, said this to you and me. Torah is not somewhere else. It's not something we need to search for. God created us in his image. And he put within us the desire to know him and his ways. That's part of each human being who was ever created. He would not have had to give the Torah if Adam and Kava had not rebelled against him because Torah was already coded into their 
protoplasm into their DNA. When we are redeemed by God through the atonement of Mashiach Yeshua, we are enabled to live out the Torah. It's the most natural thing in the world. And it feels right to live according to Torah because it's the way of being that God intended, the, cre- the way he created us to be. By living a Torah lifestyle, keeping Shabbat and the holy days, we are doing what we've been designed to do from the very beginning, fulfilling our potential, our calling, our mission, our purpose. The mitzvah that Nitzavim speaks of is that of returning to Torah and the restoration of the presence of God in our midst. God is a holy God and he cannot dwell with an unholy people. Covenant Judaism is a restoration and revival movement. We are called to do Teshuva ourselves, to return to God, and then to model for our people by our example that path of return to our God. All sons and daughters of Adam and Kava must be restored through Mashiach Yeshua's sacrifice in order to have shalom with God, to be in harmony with Hashem. In this season, we prepare for Teshuvah, repentance and return, restoration, But God is here with us right now. And Teshuvah is the way of becoming aware the Torah is in our mouths and in our hearts. God is saying to us, return to me. Be aware of me. Always in your life. Central to your life. Necessary in your life. Our presence in this world among our colleagues and friends with our family should also be a reminder of the presence of God. Just as we are here, the Eternal One is here. At this time of Teshuvah, we seek to be reminded of God's presence in our lives of his redemptive and restorative work through Mashiach Yeshua, which returns us to the place of his presence. As we read from his Torah, from his scriptures, as we pray the prayers of our ancestors, as well as the petitions of our own hearts, as we study and recite the Holy Scriptures, Let it be with a sense of awe at God's presence with us. As we prepare for the High Holy Days, beginning with Erev Rosh Hashanah and during the Yomim Noraim, the Days of Awe, we should be seeking the presence of God, desiring to enjoy real fellowship with him. The first act of one who pursues Hashem is that he puts aside anything in his life which is not pleasing to God. If you are to take God at his word, you must abandon not only evil ways, but also plans which simply don't agree with God's purpose and his will. 
we should look at the future as a clean slate. Starting from right now, we shall seek the will of God as stated clearly in his holy word. Today is the day that we should call out to him while he is near. God is present with us when we acknowledge our own evil inclination and sin and come in repentance to him. God is present with us when we humble ourselves before him. God is present with us when we bring offerings of praise and thanksgiving, as well as our tithes and bikarim. God is present with us when we worship him for who he is. When we seek the presence of God, we should do so with respect for his awesome majesty he is the eternal God, the one and only God who can only be known by his revelation to us. He is the creator of the universe. His hand may be seen in all that he has made in the universe itself and in every amazing creature. He is our God, our sovereign our master. He alone is our redeemer and savior. We must recognize and reflect upon his uniqueness and supreme power and authority. His word has only to be in his mouth to accomplish its purpose. No word spoken by him returns unfulfilled or invalidated. Reflect upon the covenant he has established with our forefathers and with us. <clears throat> Finally, may we reflect and meditate upon his presence and what it means to us, and also what our presence means to him. This poem was written by Ruth Brin. It's called A Sense of Your Presence. Among our many appetites, there is a craving after God. Among our many attributes, there is a talent for worshiping God. Jews who wandered in the deserts beneath the stars knew their hearts were hungry for God. Jews who studied in candle-lit ghetto rooms thirsted longingly after God. In tent or hut or slum, Jewish women prayed to God. But we who are smothered with comfort sometimes forget to listen. Help us, O oh God, to recognize our need to hear the yearning whisper of our hearts. Help us to seek the silence of the desert, the thoughtfulness of the house of study. Bless us, like our ancestors in ancient days, with the most precious gift, a sense of your presence. Brush us with the wind of the wings of your being, Fill us with the awe of your holiness. We too will praise, glorify, and exalt your name. May we seek to understand what being there really means today and during the coming days of all. May we be blessed with the awareness of God's permanent presence with us and play our part in creating a sense and a place of holiness and sanctity in our own lives, within our synagogue, and in the lives of those around us.
Ashana Tova Tikatavu. May you be inscribed for a good year. Shalom and blessings.